Climate change has been named to be the most serious public health challenge of the 21st century, and that's for myriad reasons. The most obvious one is heat, and heat itself, it's estimated every year, causes several hundred thousand deaths around the world. But it's not just heat. We have the other extreme weather events that are becoming more common and intense with climate change, and all of those have serious health consequences. One aspect that's underappreciated now is that all of these extreme events cause population displacement. People lose their homes, and that causes long-term medical issues. In addition, there are issues with infectious diseases. Because the world is getting warmer, mosquitoes and ticks tend to live better in a warming world. So we're seeing an expansion of what we call vector-borne diseases. We're also very concerned about the adverse health effects of human activities that cause climate change, most notably the burning of fossil fuels. It emits toxic air pollutants. The vision of the Yale Center on Climate Change and Health is a safe and stable climate in which human health and diverse ecosystems can thrive. And also, very importantly, we integrate social justice into all of our work. When people first think of climate change, the image people think of is polar bear. But polar bear is too distant. What we try to argue here is climate change is essentially a public health issue. It is about the heart health of your parents, uh, about the mental health of your kids, about the kidney uh, health of you. So this is really about you, your friends, your, your, your neighbors, your family. In order to achieve that mission, we need to reveal the full spectrum of the climate change impacts on health. Because if people don't know about it, then of course people can just ignore it. When we study climate change and health, it's essentially because the climate problem is a multidisciplinary problem. It's a problem that the whole society faces. Thus, it requires a whole societal approaches, ranging from climate science air pollution science, environmental epidemiology, machine learning approaches, cardiology, all the different approaches together to understand really how climate change can impact our health. The ultimate goal of the Chen Lab is to produce policy relevant scientific evidence. Our recent research focusing on the ambient carbon monoxide impacts on mortality in multiple countries around the world. That research supports what health organizations ambient air quality guidelines for carbon monoxide for the first time. The online certificate program is one of the first, if not the first, of its kind in the country, if not the world, geared towards working professionals. And the real goal of this program is to bring folks from around the disciplines and professions needed to make strides on climate change and health. So we have a concentration in climate change and health for MPH students. The great thing about how this is designed is that because it's a concentration, it brings students from around the entire school, and so all of the departments of the school, to learn about climate change and health and how they can apply the skills and the knowledge from their particular uh, programs. Our policy and practice pillar is critical to assuring that our work has impact. We need to take our research and our education and link it with what's happening on the ground, particularly for an issue like climate change and health, where there are important policy decisions happening today. There's important interventions that need to happen to protect people's health. The Center on Climate Change and Health worked closely with the Department of Public Health in Connecticut to apply for and receive a CDC climate and health grant. There are only a few of these grants given around the country, so it's a big deal for Connecticut to have one for the first time. Through the grant, um, they establish an Office of Climate and Public Health. This office will work with uh, local health departments, with communities, with other stakeholders 
to develop strategies to protect people's health, especially around heat and air quality here in Connecticut. We've traditionally thought about climate change as something that happens far away, somewhere else in the future to non-humans, but that's not true. We know that it's happening right now here in our communities and that it's affecting our health. What's powerful about that is that it means that we can engage people on it in a way that feels really upfront in their lives. And so a lot of our work is working with communities, talking about these issues, finding solutions that are addressing their, their current priorities, addressing their health and how it's affected by climate change, and, and also addressing the kinds of drivers of climate change uh, in their homes, in their, in their transportation systems, that those solutions have a health benefit too.